Well, hello everyone and welcome to this cool and breezy Sunday show. We're on that roller coaster of yep. weather here in Oklahoma City. It's gotten a lot cooler again and fortunately we have finally gotten some rain. Hallelujah. I am loving this. It's knocked some plants down, but that is a small price to pay for this wonderful rain. And my plants are as grateful as I am. So today, some of the work that we're gonna be doing out in the garden, we are going to finish planting the window box and get that project complete. Check it off of our list. I'm gonna share a couple of really valuable gardening hacks. We're gonna go inside and I'm gonna talk about some Mother's Day gift suggestions. Oh my goodness, just a lot of, <laughs> of little miscellaneous things. So what do you say? Let's get started. Well, cottage gardens, to get that feel, the fluttery, floating, hovering feel that I want from the plants that will be up here on the hill, um, I'm going to have to rely on some self-seeders, just a key component, a key ingredient of a cottage garden. And thankfully, my friend Gail, uh, gifted me with all sorts of seeds from her absolutely incredible cottage garden up in Enid. So here is my hack. This is a great gardening hack. But here is also my question of the day. What is your best gardening hack to share with all of us? Please put it in the comments below. And this is definitely one of those occasions when you guys are gonna want to read each other's comments. So here's my hack. When I am spreading lots of seed, for example, especially really fine seed, like poppies or larkspur or uh, sometimes my feverfew, but when I spread it, a lot of times, uh, it's since it's so fine it just kind of all ends up in a clump and then you have to thin out the clump and that's just one more step so if you want more even distribution try this seed seasoning hack so I will take either sometimes I'll use a really large plastic bottle that I've had Italian seasoning in or something like that in this case I've got a sugar shaker that I uh, in its past life was used for powdered sugar. But in this case, I have filled it, in the past I have filled it with just coarse sand or just play, play box sand, any kind of sand. But this time I'm being a little bit more ingenious. That's and I'm, no sand. That, this is not sand. This is Eden's Best Earthworm Castings. So I'm putting some of this earthworm uh, deliciousness inside of this shaker and then I'm going to add my seed. Now I could do this with my seeds individually or I can select which seeds I kind of all want to come up together in a natural, naturalized kind of way like they might do on a prairie or something. So I'm gonna select those and in my selection, I think I've already told you that I've done this one time before and I'm seeing evidence of those seedlings. So I'm going to put some white coxcomb seed in there and you can see some of it is spilling out. It's, nice. Yeah, it's very fine. It's very fine. So I'm gonna put some of that in there because this is gonna be a late bloomer. I love the planning aspect, it's really neat. Yeah, yeah, because it's an aesthetic thing in addition to being a practical thing. Let's see, she gifted me some pale yellow hollyhock, but I am not going to broadcast that. For one thing, the seeds are a lot bigger and I might want to grow it in a different area. But I definitely want to grow some Cleome, and this is white Cleome, white or pink Cleome, and either one will be fine fine with me. So you can see here that it's about the size of a larkspur seed. All of this, both of this, the, the, um, uh, the coxcomb and the cleome, the, or I should say maybe celosia if you're familiar with that term, these are real heat busting plants. They will love the heat and I think that even 
even though they will be up here on the hill, I think still, unless, unless winds are just really, really extreme, they'll be able to handle the breeze. So I've also got some white hollyhock that I would like to have somewhere, but again, I'm not going to seed it along with these others. Is now, that because of the size? Because of the size and because of the size of its foliage. It's just a huge plant. These other things are going to be a little bit more delicate. And again, I will probably later on, I will, I will start selecting which, which particular plants I want to be in place to get the look that I want. This is that wonderful Verbena bonariensis. I guess this could be my second my second question of the day. Some people love it, some people hate it because it will very riotously go to seed in your garden. But I love how, I love it, but probably not as much as the pollinators love it. So I'm gonna include that in here. And then I am hoping that next year, I will leave some and the seeds will dry in place and I won't necessarily have to do this again next year. I, and then I've got some more uh, red cocks coming but again, these are plants that I think I'm going to reserve. I'm going to reserve for later, and I think I put my white coxcomb in there. Doing it on some kind of surface is good because it can capture any seeds that go astray. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put some more of this worm casting deliciousness on top Warm and this poop. is and this is this is kind of fine and we and most of us i think oops know the benefits of worm castings aka worm poop <laughs> okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm really going to shake this up and i've left enough clearance at the top in the bottle so that it will shake and hopefully evenly distribute, or more evenly than I could distribute, all of that wonderful seed throughout my concoction here. I remember my boys doing this sometimes for me when I when they were little. Also seems like you're making a cocktail. Yep, kind of like well, well, yeah. Okay, <laughs> shake okay, I need and to not be, stirred. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, shake and not stirred. Absolutely, I like that. Okay, so I did it on a surface so I could take whatever fell off, and I could scatter it so as not to waste any seed. I could kind of scatter it in here, and I'm going to save that cardboard for later because it's going to lead to my second hack. Okay, so where do I want to scatter this seed? I think I did this, maybe, did I do this in, a, in another episode, Stuart? But I, I, want to I, I want to seed some more. So I'm going to kind of just shake it. And actually, I try to shake it from higher up, and I can do that because it's not real windy today. And I'm going to shake this inst and amongst the salvia because I want it to all kind of come up together in that kind of unruly cottage garden fashion. The other reason that I'm doing this is if I seed this and then it rains and then it germinates some of those germinated seedlings will be inside and or around the the foliage and the roots of those plants and if i have to cut them back then something will grow up in its place while that foliage and that plant is starting its new regrowth does that make sense i think so I think so okay so look over here here's some that I sprinkled that have already started to germinate in here. And so these will, will come up and they will start coming up between some of this fronds of the agapanthus. If there is too much, all I have to do is edit it out to get the look that I want. This is kind of happy kind of weeding. I know it's, it's hard to thin seed sometimes but in this case, I hope to have such an abundance of them that it won't, that it won't be a, a difficult thing for me to do. Just put some pepper on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and when I'm loving the ones that I'm already seeing. 
Okay. You could do this to music. I could do this. Like just loud somber Shake music. Shake it or up, baby. Yeah. Oh, now yeah, shake go. it up, baby. Okay. So I apologize for that. No, that was good. <laughs> Please cover your ears. We should put we need to put a warning sign at the beginning of this, Stuart. <laughs> Linda gets goofy. Okay. <laughs> and I am just gonna because I think, I think it'll be beautiful watch. around this candy butterfly. Now again, I could broadcast this and just go like that, but I think that would probably spread them in some cases too densely, and I want this kind of evenly distributed around in here. The other nice thing about this is the plants that are in place. All right, I can walk and follow you, right? Yep. Okay. The plants that are in place, <laughs> the agapanthus, the salvia, the butterfly bushes, these are also going to support the stems of these emerging plants. Stuart got distracted. Stuart got distracted. These pretty guys. Okay. Yes, aren't they gorgeous? Indigo frost. Indigo frost. So, most of this... Oh, look here, Stuart. Here's a happy thing that makes me smile. Okay, let me get over there. I lo look at all of that new foliage coming at the base of this Veronica. And it's also in that beautiful lavender, which is kind of my color palette. So I think this is going to be pretty incredible. And you know what? If not, it's an experiment. It's just an experiment. I can tear it all out if I don't like it. Um, I can revise it for next year. Part of the reason I wanted to start a new garden is so that I would have the luxury of experimentation. Because in the, in the other, at the other house, I didn't have that luxury. I just didn't have the space to be able to do this and reimagine what I, what I kind of wanted in a garden. So I'm going to take a pause for a minute because I want to, I, I want to comment on some of your comments, which were just brilliant. So, and it will, uh, some of these will lead to my next gardening hack. But a number of you said, oh, Linda, you could, you could, why didn't I use flagstone as my pavers? Well, number one, pieces of flagstone are more expensive than these pavers. Secondly, I already had these and I didn't want to spend any more money. Thirdly, I could leave them like this. And initially I am leaving them this light color so I can see and kind of make a mental map in my head of where I've got them placed. And they are not necessarily in their ultimate position. But the other reason um, is so I can see them. Later on, I can paint them if I want. I can dirty them up. I can darken them in some fashion so that they will recede into the garden and it will just look like the rest of the earth and you won't be able to see them. So I can do that, but I'm not going to do it now. Uh, a lot of you are bringing up great ideas of things that I have plans for, but I'm just not quite at that at that stage yet. I'm doing lots of finishing touches here, but not all of them quite yet. Stuart's telling me to get my bangs I'm, I'm telling you out, out of my eyes. My ears are cold, and so I've got to keep my ears covered. Okay, so that is, that is my first hack. My second hack relates to... I'm trying to get over there, hold on. Be oh, careful, you, you coming Stuart. back? I, I'm, com I'm coming over here. Okay. Follow me. All right. Follow me. So this is my, my next hack um, that relates to painting those pavers. So anything that is too bright white in your garden, I've talked about this before, whether it's a downspout, a utility box, um, almost anything, if it's too light to bright and too contrasting with the organic color palette of your garden, then you can spray paint it. And you can see that this piece of cardboard I have pressed into service to do just that. And I, I'm thinking about this because if you look over here, and none of this has been mulched yet, this is another finishing touch as yet to be completed, but you can see that I finally have my irrigation, my timer box, 
my outlet in place. Now, would I have liked to have put it in some other location? Yes, but for a number of different reasons, all engineering type reasons, they had to be in this location. Obviously, they can be removed by a new owner or by me, but they're also going to be largely hidden by the topiaries I have in place. To obscure them that much more, to camouflage them even more greatly, I will spray paint them but not right now. I'm not going to do that today. But I can spray paint them later and then that will, and I'll spray paint them approximately a color of the brick so they will just recede into the distance and look as if they are just part of the house's facade. The other idea, I love this, love this, love this, and I believe it was a longtime follower, Edith, who gave me this idea and I'm, I'm embarrassed that I did not think of it myself. She said, Linda, I am sure those posts that are on your trees to support them against the wind and have to be in place for a while are driving you crazy. <laughs> and they are, because since this is a new garden, since right now there, there's constantly things out. I've got you know all of these tools, things haven't grown up. It looks very cluttery. It looks very piecemeal. It looks very unfinished. And part of that is just the nature of some of the structures that are in place, albeit temporarily, to support and get the rest of this stuff established. So back to Edith's, Edith's suggestion. And if it was you, please uh, take credit for it in the comments below. She said, why don't you spray paint those posts black? So I have started that process. You can see over here. I didn't here, even notice. You didn't even, well, it's because they receded <laughs> the, so yeah. much into the background. And so I can do this. No close-ups on this one. On a day, yeah, no close-ups <laughs> on this one. But on a day when it's not windy. Unlike today. Unlike today. Well, it's just, it's not really windy. It's just a little breezy. It's hilarious. I'm sure there'd be people that would consider this very windy. Yeah. So you can, us. and it just fades into the background. Now you can still see them, but they're not nearly so prominent. The other thing that I'm going to spray paint, and I've gone back and forth on it, is should I spray paint the base of this bird bath or not? And I think I probably will. I'm going to be deciding on that. And I can do the same thing, just put a piece of cardboard back. There's not a lot of overspray or anything to hurt the plants, and I think it'll be fine. So I might even get hubs to help me with this, to go around and spray paint all of the things that I just want to go away. <laughs> Um, I have decided that I really don't like this as a planter here. I am going to put just a birdbath bowl in here, but I have yet to do that while this is looking kind of scruffy. I am happy, however, to see that I brought a, an eastern redbud that volunteered in here from the other house, so I'll be planting that somewhere. Um, so, that's, so that is that. Someone also asked me, um, will the birds eat my blueberries? And they might eat some of them, and that's fine with me. They might eat all of them. Maybe that's not so fine, but I can protect them in some, in some ways. And I'll, I'll show you in another, in another video how I can protect them from the birds, um, or if I just like the way that, that they look. I don't know. That remains to be seen. Nothing is ever complete around here. Yep. It's kind of beautiful, actually. It is kind of beautiful. Okay, so I think we need to take a break here, Stuart. I need a drink of water. You guys get your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, uh, your beverage of choice, and I'll meet you back here to finish the window box. Well, finally, we are planting the window box. It has been custom built for this location. I'm gonna show you what it looks like underneath. Now, there will be infill and some other things that will pretty the, this up a little bit later, but you can see that we've got irrigation workings under here. There is all sorts of bracing and support because this is very heavy. This side has this framed out on the east side and on the west side it sits on a platform um, on the porch. 
Then we had a metal liner made for it. And if you want to go back and you want to revisit how all of this was done, it's in previous episodes. But I made a metal, or I, Kayla had her guys make a metal liner for it so that it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't cause rot on the wood frame. And then we trimmed it out. We filled it up with all sorts of organic garden debris. A number of you recommended some other things I could have used. I could have used old plastic nursery pots. I could have used metal cans. I could have used um, contained styrofoam, uh, what are those called? Styrofoam packing, oh, whatever, packing, packing yeah. peanuts. Yeah. I don't really like, like that too much. But all of, really all I did was put a little bit of gravel, a lot of organic debris that will break down over time, leave me clearance at the surface to top dress if I need to. And then I just uh, filled the remaining space with a really good quality potting soil. I put in a granular espoma, by a tone fertilizer and then I started planting. So what I did was I went ahead and composed and planted one side of this so you could see what I envision at least at the beginning in my head of course it's already cascading <laughs> and spilling out with all sorts of summer color but we ain't there yet. Um, so this is the east side. So my first ingredient in this window box planting is some chef's choice rosemary. It is so fragrant. I love the textural quality that it gives to the entire ensemble and I just love the fragrance of it. Then this is qu kind of quirky and a little bit of an experiment. Nevertheless, I think it might be fun, particularly if it works. <laughs> I'm, I planted some on its side. I took, and I'll show you how I did this. Is I took an Anaheim pepper, oh, planted it on its side so that it will then grow and hopefully spill out over the front of the container. Again, all of these are heat busting plants that can really tolerate this exposure and these high temps. It's already got some buds on it. Then my friend Gail, when I was up in Enid, in addition to gifting me some seeds, she gifted me a start of a sun gold tomato. So I am hoping, and don't you love the beautiful I foliage love, on that yeah. anyway? There's kind of that purpley edge to it. So this will grow out and again, hopefully cascade over the side. And what I'll do at that point, once it gets that big and that luxurious, then I will start, start carefully editing out some of its foliage so that I get just the right ratio of vegetables to other kinds of, of leafy, uh, strictly foliage plants. Then I have some of this purple Joseph's coat. I could have used some purple sweet potato vine, but I just wanted something that was a little bushier and not necessarily cascading. So this color I think looks beautiful along with this penta. So this is a lavender pinta that will repeat kind of the purple, purple, yellow, and kind of silvery gray that I have envisioned for this color palette. When I am planting some of these smaller things, then I might need to do some targeted pruning on my major components. And this is an Irish mint euonymus. It's a Southern living plant. I've put it in here, hopefully, as a window box mainstay that will endure through the seasons with its evergreen structure. And if some of its branches start to thug out some of the annuals that I have planted in here, then I can just kind of clip off some of it. Some of it I want to bend it down so it too will spill over the edge and kind of weave and bob through some of these other annuals like this just common Dusty Miller. I love the way its foliage looks. I have tucked in 
a banana lemon zest lantana. It's still a little bit cool for this to start blooming profusely, but I anticipate it will get hot soon enough and pretty soon this will luxuriously spill and cascade over the side. I've got some more penta tucked in here. If I see that any of it is getting too much shade from the light, then again, I can just clip one of its neighbors back. Here is another one of those uh, purple Joseph's coat. Some of the foliage was bruised in planting, so I can clip it off. Here is more of that, or that uh, lantana. Rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat in equal measure all up and down the expanse. And then as really something that I am hoping will be brilliant here and a, a dramatic component, and that is I planted a hanging basket of purple fan flower or scaviola that I think will be beautiful. Now the other mainstay plants that I have in this composition are, and this is kind of an unusual one, again this is just an experiment because I really wanted to use plants, a good bit of the plant material I already had. So out of the greenhouse came some, I had two pots of pineapple guava. This is a southern living plant. I loved its gray-green foliage with a hint of purple, and more importantly, I will love, look at the sweet little blooms before it goes to fruit, which Hold perfectly, me, yeah, can. which perfectly matches my there composition, especially, ooh, with that purple Joseph's coat, will look beautiful. Thank you. And then next to it, I have more lantana, and then I will plant a mirror version of this on the other side. But before we do that, we'll take a break right after I introduce this asparagus fern that I've planted in the center. It is really a little bit big and overgrown, and I'm going to cut it back some because I want the scale of it to be right, and I also don't want it to thug out some of my other plants. But I love the fact that right now it's open and airy, and there's enough negative space that you can kind of see the plants that I've planted in the foreground, and as they grow and get large and really take advantage of the heat and the moisture and the sun, they will then spill out and cascade over the side. So Stuart, let's take a little break and we'll come back and I'll pot up the other side. Wonderful. Now you can see here, this is the good potting mix that I put in, and this was basically a 50-50 blend of brand new potting soil and 50% some old potting soil I had in another container that really um, ha still had some life in it. And that's those metal you were talking about. Yes, and there you the can see side. the metal liner right here. This was the root ball, or is the root ball, of this pineapple guava, and you can see I it was dry, it was really, really root bound. So I tortured it quite a bit. And with a garden hand saw, Ooh. I literally sawed off about a third of it. <laughs> I, you can't tell now because it's dried out, but yesterday I really moistened this. I had it sitting in a bucket of water so it was very, very hydrated. And then this had grown lanky in the greenhouse and so I am pruning on it a bit to get it to kind of bush out. And I put what I thought was its best best face forward. Any twigginess I are I, I have pretty much already clipped out, but some remains. But again, I'm not worried about that too much because that's going to be obscured by some of the other things that I put in here. So, and I think this should be fine if it doesn't make it. Well, that happens sometimes, and I am just circumspect about it. See a little bit more twigginess here. I'm sure I'll continue to see some. Okay, so the next thing that was part of my recipe was a hanging basket of fan flower. You can see it, it's really beautiful. Its leaves almost feel as if they're a succulent. So I am going to remove it from its pot and a 
And this is a good trick. If you want something that really is already very grown, give it a good spanking. That already looks mature, then use a hanging basket because look there. It fits in there perfectly and it already gives the illusion Instant. of cascading down the side. So what else do I need to put in? Oh, Stuart, I'll be right back because I forgot, I forgot my rosemary. Right. So do you think you can keep everybody company? Well, I mean, where is it? Because we're going to watch you go get it. It's over here. Victor, say hello. <laughs> you guys all know Victor. He's here today helping me spread mulch. I spread a good bit of it this weekend myself, um, but my back can only handle so much, and I only have so much time in the day. So I continue to get help as this develops. Okay, so I'm going to remove this from its pot, and this is the, the advantage of having I'm going to loosen up its root ball, but the advantage of having such a large container is it will not dry out real quickly. I can basically create the effect of a small garden in a window box, but I also then have the luxury of using pretty large plants, like a large hanging basket. At the old house, you would bang those on the wall when you I, needed yes, to get it. Where yes, are you going to bang not, them here? I'm not going to bang here. I've already kind of loosened it up, and well, I But don't. when you need to bang but when a you, plant, yes, where are you going to do it? If you have a, a surface that you can bang it against, then by all means, you go for it. That was the tip at the old house. That was the tip at the old house. I'm going to put that at a little bit higher level. Oh, that smells yummy, Stuart. That really smells yummy. I'm going to go get another one now. Trying to decide, yes, I think I'll get another one. And while this is pretty symmetrical, it doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical and mirrored on the other side. I can kind of create the illusion of that without too much difficulty. And I love that this root ball is loose. You can see that I've watered this recently. Move a little bit more. There. I better move my tools or they're going to end up in the planter box. <laughs> Planted in the planter box. Be we'll careful, a woman bigger. with a tool. Linda with a tool. With a sharp tool. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of this and fill in those holes over there. And then when I'm finished, I will really, I will water this completely, really well. Let what dirt is in here settle, and then I'll come back and probably add some more top dressing of new potting soil so because I don't want any air pockets in there. Don't want any air pockets. And I am hoping that this rosemary will overwinter too, but I could also take it out. It's marginally hardy. It's hardy to zone 7b and sometimes here That's good enough, but sometimes it's not. Now I'm going to come back in here with my tinier plants and with all of my annuals. And I've got those hiding over here. Get out of my way, Mr. Fern. Before I do that, I don't want to waste any of that good dirt. Let's see. Okay. So here is, this is just, I, I, I'm just really hoping this works because I think this is going to be so good and such a wonderful example of 
incorporating edibles into your containers and garden beds, a la edible landscaping. If you haven't read my book, <laughs> then this is an example of that. So here's my pepper. And here I'm going to loosen up the root ball. And this is what I mean about planting it on its side. So instead of planting it like this, and I could, and actually on this side I might, but if I wanted it to spill over, then I would just orient it that way. So the other one I'm allowing to spill over. This one I think I might want it to be upright. But I am going to plant my little sun gold tomato to spill over right next to it. Because this is, I've always said, that plants and this gardener don't always know which end is up. The roots can grow this way as easily as they can grow this way. So I'm going to put that on its side in there. And sometimes when I think, oh, am I providing a good environment? Is this going to be enough soil? All that, I think, oh my goodness, I have tomatoes. When they volunteer, they come up everywhere. Those are the best tomatoes. <laughs> they come up everywhere, but sun golds are really wonderful. And that color will be great. I'm going to remove that bottom leaf and maybe this one. And now I'm going to start tucking in my annuals. Let me get one here. This is what I was saying. It's banana lemon zest. This is a brilliant nursery nearby, red dirt, locally grown. This, by the way, this is back to basics kind of stuff. This is the kind of loose root ball you want when you are planting because it will just be, I'm going to tuck it in in the back and let it grow forward, up and forward. because those are the kind of roots that are going to be so enthusiastic about growing in your garden. And next to that little sun gold, I'm going to plant this Alternatera, Little Ruby. Oops, I didn't get to see it. Oops, sorry. Right. Mm, this is Little good. Ruby. I call, I, <laughs> Rich foliage color. People might want to know about that one. It's pretty. Yes, it is very pretty. And see, look at those beautiful, just beautiful roots. Okay. Put that next to well, it. That stands I do out, want it? to make sure that I want I, I get it deep enough. And all of this will just kind of grow together and weave in this beautiful textural harmony. Or at least that's what it's doing in my head, Stuart. Wait, I, I, I didn't, I, I don't understand. Could you show me the hand gesture again? <laughs> like this. <laughs> like that. It's, that's the Linda dance right yeah, You guys think it's me that always gives Stuart a hard time. But I mean, he gives as good as he takes. I'm going to tuck that in there. I'm always amazed how like those hand gestures actually get us as humans to understand what people are talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it actually that's works. That's true. It makes well, no sense. <laughs> when there's a language barrier, sometimes you just have to go with it. <laughs> oh man. Now it looks like I'm missing one component. Do I spy? Do I spy it over there? All right. Let's see if they can spot it. What is it you're looking for? What is my missing component? You don't even know. It, it, I, I know. I was about to say, Let's what see, is it? see, does everybody else know? Oh, oh they can because we have the... It's the Dusty Miller. There it is. It's the Dusty Miller. Let me see if I can find it over here. I swear I knew a Dusty Miller in my life. Well, da 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 Surely I didn't use all of it. If I did, I'll just have to get a little bit more. And add it later. So see, don't worry, you don't have to be perfect, because gosh knows, I have no expectations of perfections myself. Perfection myself. It's the right okay, way to so be. I'm going to put more lantana in. A healthy way to be. Right now, there is just there is just so much going on and so many things out of place. And I am trying to, I will probably tuck those tags in here somewhere. 
Let me see what else. I deliberated whether or not, and I'm not sure I want to do it, but maybe I do. Um, okay, Stuart, you know what we're going to do? We're going to recast this. Okay, so while you were away, <laughs> I added my missing component, which was this evergreen, important for evergreen structure on this side of another Irish mint euonymus. I like that name too. And now I am just adding the other missing components. I did, I added the scabiola back in there. I was afraid you guys would get bored just watching me redo the same stuff. So I put that back in there. And now I am just filling in with my formula of Lantana, Joseph's Coat, Lavender Pentas. And I'm definitely going to have to, what I'm loving, Stuart, Mm -hmm. um, is that what I'm going to have to is just wait for a bit for this stuff to start looking a little bit better. It looks kind of rangy right now, but I feel confident that it will because we've got cool temperatures here for a while. And while this stuff is putting out root growth, by the time the warmer temperatures come back, this stuff will be relatively established in these cooler temps and rainier temps and really be ready to explode. And that makes me very, very happy. So I am, and the rule of thumb about when you're planting containers is however many you have, you probably want more. Because <laughs> they can coexist in a crowded state. And if some of them prove thuggish and thug out, the others, well, then it may be that something I could have controlled by cutting back the one, or I might just let it thug it out because what ultimately ends up happening might be superior to what I had planned in my head. Plants are such thugs. Some of them can be, some of them <laughs> can be. Okay, so Stuart, yeah. I'm gonna stand back and I'm gonna look at this. Okay, I want, you, I want you to snap me back there. We're both going to go back. Okay, one, two, three. Stuart, it's hard to snap. <laughs> hey, it's, the magic is still it's, there. It's hard to snap with your cool <laughs> job gloves on. Let me just tell you, and I do love these gloves, guys. They're still my very favorite. Um, so it looks a little bit scruffy now, but usually it does before things don't completely fill in. But I think that all of these this combination of all of these textures and colors is really going to be beautiful, especially as the plants start cascading over the side. I'm especially interested in seeing how the rose, the, um, the peppers and the sun gold tomatoes turn out. And once everything starts getting light and heat, I think it'll be absolutely gorgeous. And if not, I will just change it. I guess you just have to have a little bit of faith. And you know what? If you don't have any faith, Stuart, can we show them some of the images of the window box? I, now I probably really have wild, wild hair. Wacky hair. Um, <laughs> images of the window box at the other house so oh, people yeah. can kind of see what happens with a little bit of time and patience. Well, I am back inside the cottage, a little bit windblown, but nevertheless feeling a little bit self-satisfied because I finally got the window box planted. It can start growing in situ. I, that has been gnawing at me for a really long time because I kind of saw it in my head. I envisioned what it ultimately will look like, just like the cottage terrace when it's all filled out, but first it has to be executed. So I've gotten that done and I'm just going to say a prayer that it turns out as beautiful in reality as it does in my imagination. But I want to 
kind of transfer over to a, a different topic, and that is Mother's Day. I'm already kind of thinking about it. <laughs> I have put a couple of things on my list that I want from Hubs, and I'll be sharing those in future videos. But today I wanna to give you a sampling of a couple of things. Now, the first one would require some delayed gratification, but nevertheless, I am so excited about my new garden journal that's coming out. It's actually not available yet. This is a mock-up. You can see on the inside, you guys get all of the behind the scenes kind of workings. And, but this is a prototype of what it will look like. I'm so excited about it. And in fact, I don't think I've ever been in, in anticipation of getting one of my own products um, quite this intensely before. And it's because I really kind of want to start my garden journey here at the cottage by documenting it in my new garden journal. It's a five-year garden journal and there will be places for you to keep seed packets, uh, plant tags, things of that nature. There's a ribbon divider. Anyhow, it'll be absolutely wonderful, I promise, because I put great thought into it. You'll be able to keep inventory of all sorts of things, seeds, tools, trees, plants, annuals, and all sorts of related information as to when you planted them, how they're performing, uh, measures to control pests, disease, things of that nature. So this would be my first one. But if you want a book where there is immediate gratification, maybe you could get an IO, give an IOU for this, but I am really infatuated with this book. I very few make it into my permanent library anymore. I test them out um, from the public library first. This is The Evolution of Home English Interiors for a New Era, and it really has an aesthetic and a vibe that I, that I like and that I'm trying to have here at the cottage where tradition meets kind of contemporary appointments and it's a great book I will of course put a link in the description below and by the way you guys the descriptions or the links to all of these products they are in the description box below but also if you follow me on Instagram I put an Instagram story up where you can just swipe up and you can capture the link there but this is my second recommendation my third recommendation and something I am really excited about about because it's been it's been something that has been waxing and waning and in process and out of process but finally this Monday on the second channel on QBC there are going to be some new additions to the Linda Vodder home collection product line and I'm really excited about them primarily these garden cloches that I've been talking about for so long. Some of you very astutely spied them in the uh, some of the videos we did in at the other house when I was trying out samples of them in the garden. These are gonna come in three different finishes. And what I love is that they are coming in different sizes. Look at this one. How incredible is this one? So I'm already anticipating that some of these would be perfect um, in service of keeping pests away, particularly birds and things over my blueberry steward. I could kind of put these over the blueberries, at least when they're smaller, to prevent birds from eating up all of my delicious and delectable fruits um, and any other thing that you've got growing in your edible garden. But also they would be wonderful to protect new tender seedlings from marauding squirrels or any kind of digging pests. And I think they're just really beautiful. Now something else that I think is ingenious about them, and again these will be on QVC.com, the Linda Vodder collection. You just put in QVC Linda Vodder home collection. And but what I love about them is that these are these can be separated. So you can add to them as the plants grow, but also you can use each component in isolation. So if I just wanted, I just got these fresh out of the box, you guys. If I wanted to just use this separately in and of itself as some kind of plant support or cage for something growing in the garden, I could. And then I could add the top part later and they just clip into place. I also can 
can see them fashioned in some way with all sorts of gorgeous produce or pumpkins or things inside um, inside and being encased by their beauty. So that's uh, one of the things I'm just tremendously excited about. I also have watering cans and something many of you have asked about the plant terrace. This is an indoor outdoor plant terrace that you can stick into the corner of your garden or of your home and you can showcase at varying different levels any kind of plants that you want to put on display and really give some prominence. So all of these will be available online on Monday. I'm going to have an hour-long show, at least that's what it looks like at this point, um, from 12 Eastern Time, 1 Central Standard Time for an hour. And we'll be talking about these different products, how to order them, um, how to buy them online, but also maybe some ingenious ways for you guys to use them in your garden. And I think they would make great Mother's Day gifts. I'm going to be sharing some more of my favorite things that I've got on my list that I want a little bit later in upcoming videos. So Stuart, what do you think? Have we covered a lot of topics today? Sure. Um, I think it was a fun show. Again, work continues inside and outside of the cottage. If you are enjoying taking this journey along with me, please make sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, comment below if you have ideas for me or if you just have anything that you would like to share. And also a great shout out of thanks to everybody who this week sent me kind letters, kind messages, who stopped by to say hello because it does my heart good. And I hope this show did your heart good as well.